The villains of Power Rangers are a lot more schizophrenic when it comes to personalities. Most are motivated by past grudges, a few are after revenge or just trying to get some sort of powerful item. It's hard to pick who are the best villains or who are the worst villains. Some start out really strong, then some get messed up for various reasons. Lothor. A lot of people didn't really care for Ninja Storm. It gave people a bad taste. We had another goofy villain, and that remark of Power Rangers being unknown, people are going to really hate on it. The last time we had comedy was with Divatox, and since Turbo overall was junk, some people didn't want to see another moron in command. Yes, Lothar does do jokes, but he isn't the one doing them all the time. The people around him are, so he never bothered me. What got me to like him was that he interacts with the Rangers a lot. Most main baddies don't do that all often, Zed being the worst offender. He was also related to the characters. By being the twin brother of Sensei Guinea Pig, we got a complete backstory for not only Lothor, but for Cam, his mother, which Power Rangers always loves to ignore, Dino Charge, Ninja Steel, and Sensei. Plus, the season was caused by a good time travel paradox. Unlike Dino Charge's bad ending, the reason why Lothor hated his brother was because Cam went back in time and set off certain events. Then you had a team up in Dino Thunder. Lothor almost won. He brainwashed most of the Ninja Storm team, and to be even more vile, used Cam's morpher against everyone. Lothar can be very evil and do the role of main villain pretty good. King Bongo! After three years of having Rita, Zed, and if you can call Master Vile a main character, it was a good changeup for the show. Mondo is a robot along with his evil family, so he's gonna be really different compared to others. Mondo always felt more menacing. He actively attacked the Rangers whenever he could. He didn't care if they were at school or on vacation. He also messed around with the Rangers in a more psychological way, like stealing Adam's morphers just because he forgot them in his bag. Went after the civilian population by brainwashing them to love all machines. Even went as far as making babies cry to destroy stuff. I did hate that he was killed off in the middle of the season, but it allowed the other family members to continue and get focused on. Plus, he wasn't afraid of handling the Rangers himself. The Machine Empire and the Zeo Rangers are unique to be carried through to the 10th anniversary. Lord Zed! I didn't want to put him this low on my list, but I do have to account on how he got messed up later on. Visually, he was a great character, an original main villain that didn't have to use Sentai footage. The first time we met him, he throws Rita away, literally. He's the muscle-bound guy, tubes flowing through him with no skin. I always saw it as he got caught in some massive explosion, possibly something that happened when Rita and Zordon were fighting in the past, so he hates both of them equally. I was never scared of how Lord Zed looked like. I seriously doubt a lot of the so-called kids getting scared of Zed were all that true. Let's face it, there are monsters in MMPR that were a lot more gruesome and a few that got a hole drilled into them, and no one complained then or since. Just Zed when the show was at its peak, and in parents' mind, the most. I remember all my friends in elementary school. No one ever said Zed was spooky. Everyone loved him. Zed wasn't a bad guy that's just a bad guy. He had set goals and got rid of anything or anyone that could get in his way. His first assault on the Rangers forced him to get better Zords. The monsters he made were more personal. If you loved that bag, boom, it was the monster you fought. So you're always worrying about your things being destroyed. It's small, but it's a great way to mess with the Rangers' minds. He didn't put up with anyone goofing off. I did get tired of Squad and Boo Boo being idiots and Rita letting them just be there. We'll never know how Zed would have been like if Rita never came back. They could have gone in a more creepy direction with what Die Ranger had to offer, especially when the US team started making original Zord footage. I'm not saying it would have been amazing, but seeing Zed fight the Thunder Megazord as a season cliffhanger would have been great, instead of the way the show just left Zed and Rita get more comical and throw in Master Vile just to do a bad guy being a bad guy. Divatox. I didn't really hate her. When we first saw her in the Turbo movie, it was jarring that we got someone this comedic as an enemy, but I never saw Divatox as the main reason why Turbo sucked. I always say it was a perfect storm of Justin being a bad character, Rocky leaving for no reason, Zeo not having a proper ending, the Car Ranger footage, and then making all the side characters like Elgar very dumb. 
Mix that with the first half where none of the four older cast members do anything, you got a crap season. In some ways, Diva Tox was better than Zed. She interacted with the Rangers more often, she physically went near them, the Rangers went to the sub base a few times, we got a full episode about her which was decent, and she had a grudge against all the other villains. I guess she hated being ignored while everyone else was getting a chance at Earth. I guess Earth is a prime real estate everyone wants to crack at. Diva Tox also stayed the most consistent compared to Rita. Sometimes she creates these amazing monsters, evil, spooky, creepy, other times create moronic ones. Zed was great at the start, then turned puppy dog. Diva Tox made the same type of goofy monsters and she never changed. She's a little higher on my list for the ending of Turbo. For all the issues that the season gave us, it truly was the beginning of the end. Yes, Green Ranger infiltrating the command center and almost killing Zordon was great. But Diva Tox actually storming the power chamber and completely annihilating it, there was no turning back. They lost their Zords, their powers were gone, and all they had left was Alpha. Elgar fighting the power chamber was a bad MacGuffin, but yell at Zordon for leaving the command center exterior visible to anyone that flies over it. Astronomer. She was the first main villainess that was connected to a ranger. It made the stakes really high. It made Andros and the audience confused. How could his sister become evil and do these things? Tor, Zordon, and other planets. You're torn with the characters like Astronema. Even my review, I'm keeping Astronema separate to Caron. I see them as two different people, even though they're not. It's hard on the audience. You want to hate her? She took Zordon, is using her life energy to bring an evil into the universe, but at the same time, she was taught to be this way, taken at a young age and raised to hate a lot of the things. Then, just as you think Andros finally got through, Dark Spectre brainwashed her, so now she's stuck being evil. I didn't know how to feel, even a Clipter, one of the most evil characters in In Space, still thought that was wrong and didn't want her to be that way because he cared about her, raised her, and knew not to do things that she didn't want to do regardless that she was going against Spectre. These are compelling villain characters. She has goals, she has wants, then she questions them all just because she found out about Andros. Either one of them could have turned. Astronema could have stayed evil. She was raised that way, and Andros could have turned evil just to join her. That's one of the areas Power Rangers hasn't attempted to explore. Yes, a hero is supposed to be just, but everyone has the ability to be evil, and thankfully, she was in Lost Galaxy and it gave her that time to fully redeem herself. Trakina. Just like Astronema, Trakina is also a fleshed out character, but a little bit better in one area. She never got redeemed, and that's great. The problem with PR villains, especially when they look human, they usually end up doing something good so they stop being evil and everyone forgives them. Some characters do earn that, for example Nadira, but others not so much, like Toxica. Even though Turkina looks human, her father's a giant bug. She wasn't captured like her own, she was born evil. At first she wasn't really such a great asset. She was vulnerable, didn't know how to fight, and was kind of spoiled. Turkina whined, but when her father got killed by Leo, she changed. She became cold, uncaring, and ruthless, so she just wants revenge. We followed her for a few episodes to the point of feeling sorry that Leo did that. We're talking about Power Rangers. The color guys are the good guys, but for these few episodes, you rooted for her in some ways. You wanted her to win. What other PR season has ever done that? No matter what happened, no matter how hard Caron tried, Damon tried, Mike tried, Leo tried, just to convince her to stop, she did it. She wanted to fill her father's wishes and kill everyone that got her in her way. To the point of finally changing into the full bug, the one thing that she didn't really want to do. Another aspect that makes her unique, she's one of the few main villains that fought the Red Ranger alone. It was her personal grudge towards Leo. Trakina is a perfect example of how I want to see a villain done in a show. I want to see their point of view. I want to at one point doubt the hero. It makes the villain that much richer and more realistic. I'm not saying every villain needs to be complicated, but we don't need cookie cutter bad guys all the time. Rita. Rita was the first, so it gives me some bias, but we haven't gotten a real enemy witch since MMPR. If they hadn't changed Imperius' gender to male, we could have gotten a second one. It's the only time I didn't mind the main enemy not interacting with the rangers. Witches always use someone else to do their bidding. 
Rita even had her staff go to Earth to make a monsters grow. She created the Green Rangers just for that purpose, when she could have given the powers to herself, for example. She did create some pretty interesting monsters and delved into some of the more satanic rituals, just a call for Lokar and Mutitis. We've had so many final monsters these past 24 years, and these guys always creep me out. Even when Rita became more dumb in later seasons, it didn't betray her core characters. Since the first episode, she acted stupid and screwed up a lot. I also see her way she screwed around with Zed with those potions, pretty cunning. It saved her butt from going back into the dumpster. The only thing she lacked was a full backstory. Benjix. I wasn't sure if I should put him at number three or number one, because technically, Benjix is the only main villain that's actually one. Yeah, the RPM Rangers saved the day, but that doesn't change the fact six billion people are either dead or converted into bots. Not to mention, he was never actually killed. The irony of all this was that it took a human to actually end the world, and all the villains that have attacked it over the years failed. Assuming all the villains, at least up to Overdrive, still attacked Earth in the alternate universe. Since Vengeance is just a computer, he has no personality, just a set program. This is the only time no one was going to expect a compelling story from Vengeance, which is why I really liked him. He's the perfect scapegoat for PR storytelling. You don't really have to give any backstory to Vengeance or where the other guys come from. At the same time, Dr. K's backstory was expanded on. I really liked his ability to copy himself. Another aspect shows don't like to really do when it comes to characters. Take C-3PO for example. He's a robot. He's been damaged a fair bit, but every time that happens, we get worried that he's dead. But he's a robot. There should always be an emergency backup for him. Same goes for many other robots, like Alpha, Johnny Five, Data, R2-D2, Wally, Robot from Lost in Space, Vincent. They're not permanently lost. Benjix didn't care that he got one of his bodies blown up. He knows there's more copies of him waiting at the base, so he's really immortal unless the central control was blown up. Even then, you're not sure, so he has more of a weighted presence on the show. How do you stop this thing? That's why he's called the Benjix Virus and not the Benjix Program. Rancic. No one's going to argue that Rancic was an excellent villain. He had a purpose, not just take over the world, but to get back at the humans who mistreated him. He was created by mistake and shunned by people. What better way to get rid of them by just taking over the past and erasing all the people he hates? He didn't care if the universe ended. He wanted revenge. At the same time, he had a daughter. Rancic does care about her, so he is human to a degree, even though he killed one person who gave him respect. That's what makes Rancic really evil. He's probably the most sick-minded villain in the show. How many people has he killed personally? He's killed human fracks. He's almost killed his daughter in a rage, attempted to kill Mr. Collins, killed Alex. Then to top it off, he's loved to torment his targets. He loves bringing up that he killed Alex to Jen all the time. He knows it's the only thing that gets a response out of her and the best chance to get her to screw up. His best moment was when he got the spark of realization that all the people he was hurting and killed were feeling the same way he did when he was being ridiculed and abused. Rancic turning himself in at the end of Time Force was the only time I've ever felt the bad guy realistically being redeemed with a single season. Corone gets a pass because she luckily had another season to be expanded on. But other characters like Jindrax, Toxica, Jared, Camille, Necrolite all felt too convenient. Mesagog. Mesagog was just a little bit better than Rancic for me, mainly in one area, Trent. While Nadira was an okay daughter, she didn't really connect to her father till the end, while Trent was with, with Anton since day one. Their story was more interesting. They went in the Jekyll and Hyde direction, two sides, one good, one bad both knowing what each side is doing, Trent mirroring his father as the white dino gym corrupted him. We also have a villain that is evil, but does it in a more calming way. He almost never uses a hands-on approach. It's almost like a form of seduction. Follow me, you'll get what you want. Smitty wanted revenge on Tommy. Mezagog needed someone more level-headed, so he found Randall. I always wondered why he picked her. My theory? She was going to be used to funnel in test subjects to all the experiments he was doing, converting people into dinosaurs, and or just have an army of brainwashed zombies. His way of punishing failures was also creepy. He didn't hit you with a staff like Rita. He made you explain why you failed, make you hate yourself, and hate you failed your master, then lasered your brain. I'm surprised this type of stuff was allowed. Where are the parents that complained about Zed? Oh, that's right, Power Rangers isn't as popular as it used to be, so they don't care. Bouncing back and forth between the internal fight of Anton and Mezagog was my favorite part. How do you one-up someone that is watching you through your own eyes? Anton is constantly fighting him. 
Even while he's just teaching a class or running his business, to top it off, he knows he's personally at fault of hurting Tommy, Ethan, Kira, Connor, and his son, the complete reverse of Rancic. The main villain of any type of show has to have a realistic reason for them to do what they do. You can have a bad guy that's just a bad guy too, but as a secondary character. We watch superheroes to save the world from villains, but they got to be on par with them. Imagine one season of PR had the Rangers be just as generic as a villain. A name, a purpose, and that's it. You wouldn't watch the show for long. I like the middle ground of Lothor and Astronema. If your main villain can reach that level, they're good to go. What are your favorites? Do you agree or disagree? And if you have a suggestion on a future top 10 you'd like me to do, leave a comment down below. For next week's episode, I'll be doing my 10 most hated Power Ranger episodes ever.